All right, this is uh, the Almighty Z of Capital Chaos TV, and we're once again backstage at Slim's, down in the underbelly of the stage. We're hanging out with Ola of Grave. So uh, you're uh, you're from Sweden, right? Yep. Stockholm. Stockholm, Sweden. Yep. And uh, us Americans, we, when we hear of Swedish bands, bands from Sweden, there's a certain mystique that comes with that. Uh, it's ooh, the, they're killer. It's not enough to say. It's, <laughs> it's not enough to say that I just heard this great band. But by saying that they're from Sweden, it just gives it more uh, more credit. It's not like saying I just heard this killer band from from Roseville, yeah. Orangevale. It doesn't really add. Do yeah. you do you do you think that that mystique is uh, is uh, is accurate uh, I think so I mean it's probably for you guys over here it's probably uh, more exotic in one way than it is for us over there um, there there's been a, a Swedish death metal scene going on since the late 80s and we were a part of it and uh, of course it, it, it has some uh, resemblance in, in some ways it's the same for us I mean the, the Florida death metal scene for us was very exotic and big back in those days so uh, I guess it's the it goes both ways. Uh, once you're home or wherever your home is, it doesn't really, it doesn't feel special in any way. Right. But for other people across the world, it's it's uh, of course something unique and, and mysterious about it. Are there any uh, Swedish bands right now that are tickling your fancy? Uh, there there's some. I mean, I don't really follow the scene too much. There's um, there's a really good black metal band I like over there called Croft. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. Uh, very very good stuff. Very very different, special. Um, in the death metal scene, uh, I don't really know what what's going on too much. There's a band called Morbus Crone that are getting a lot of attention now, which is is really really good and sounds very very uh, old school like 20 20 years back so is that all you listen to is metal not at all no not really uh i very rarely listen to like the the the, the genres i i play myself i listen a lot to uh like the old the old stuff i grew up on old thrash uh the the bay area scene and also the the german thrash scene was a huge influence for us but I, I listen to everything from Beatles to Depeche Mod to Bjork, whatever. If, if, if it's good music, if it gets me, gives me any kind of emotion in any way, it's, it's good music to me. I so you can get down to some like Lady Gaga or some Katy Perry? Yeah, Katy Perry, definitely. Lady Gaga, nah, I don't, I don't get into her too much. Katy Perry, definitely. Uh, Kelly Clarkson, I listen a lot to that. Uh, just, just good songwriting and, yeah. and good songs, you know. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a sucker for a girl with a pretty voice. Yeah, me too. Pink as well. Yes, yes, and pink hair for sure. Now uh, you're on tour with Dark Funeral and Morbid Angel. That's a hell of a package. Yeah, it's it's a real good package. I think it's one of the the strongest packages out this year in this in these genres. Uh, and we're just having a good time. I mean, I know the Morbid guys since. Since '93, we toured to be together back in Europe, uh, and uh, the, the Dark Funeral guys, obviously being from Stockholm, we know each other pretty well already. So it's just a good, uh, very good, easy feeling on the tour. And has there been any standout shows for you on this particular tour? I know that uh, I talked to Lord Ariman, and he said that uh, Portland and New York were like, yeah, big tits. Yeah, New York was was very good. Yesterday was really good as well. Uh, there's there's pretty much good shows all around, uh, but there, there's always going to be some that stand out. We did a a show in Montreal where Dar uh, where Morbid Angel uh, didn't appear because uh, they couldn't for whatever reason get through the Canadian border, uh, and it was just us and Dark Funeral, and that was that was definitely one of the highlights as well on the oh tour. Wow. Yep, you had to carry the night on your own. Yep, yeah, that's so sick. We did long longer sets and. Uh, but it, it was very, very good. I'm sure there were some very happy Canadians, yeah. I'm sure. Now, uh, you did your first South American tour recently, is that right? Uh, yeah, we did, uh, we've been doing just basically Mexico. We did a ton of times, uh, just do, flying in for a couple of shows or just doing a festival. Uh, we did Colombia, we did uh, 
uh, what else? Brazil a couple of times, and uh, it's just uh, just hard to get together a, a full tour over there. So right. basically, what we've been doing is just doing a couple of countries every time we go over there, uh, tie it in with with maybe one festival show we're doing and building something around that. But we're definitely trying to do a, a, a full scale, like a, a real. Uh, South American tour in the future. Are there any European countries that are comparable to some of the South American countries that you've been to? Clearly, there are a lot of the countries down there are a little more depressed in yeah. America. I would say, like uh, Eastern Europe, uh, what what used to be the old uh, behind the, the communist border, uh, are are very much like the South Americans. They're very appreciative because uh, bands don't come around there all the time. So once there's a show there, they freak out and and and, uh, and really show appreciation for for bands coming out there. So like everything, you know, like Hungary, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, all these these uh, old used to be communist countries where where it was uh, pretty much impossible to play in the early 90s. Uh, they, they they still really appreciate bands coming around there, and it's it's usually uh, some of the best shows on a on a European tour.